Hello friends, I am Dr. Sumit Sinha, Senior Consultant Interventional Cardiologist and Head Department of Cardiology at Virinchi Hospital, Banjara Hills, Hyderabad. Today I am going to discuss about acute coronary syndromes, commonly known as heart attacks in layman's language. This acute coronary syndromes includes um, different types like acute myocardial infarction, unstable angina and uh, chronic stable angina. The basic uh, risk factors for developing heart disease involving the coronary blood vessels which supply the heart muscle are, one is the age. So people over the age of uh, 55 in males uh, in, uh, and uh, more than 65 in females, people who are smokers, diabetics, who have high blood pressure, high levels of cholesterol, triglycerides, low levels of HDL and uh, who have habits like smoking, tobacco chewing and alcohol are all predisposed to developing heart disease. Besides these, you also have genetic factors that is where the parents, grandparents or first degree relatives are having heart disease and these people are predisposed to developing heart disease at an early age. Unfortunately, in our modern day society, the incidence of heart disease has increased tremendously by leaps and bounds. And today, unfortunately, coronary artery disease is the number one killer in the modern day society. So it is very important that all of us are aware of the dangers of developing a heart disease and also take the necessary remedial measures to prevent heart disease and also so seek treatment as early as possible to prevent damage to the heart. So basically the symptoms of having a coronary artery disease are that is exertional breathlessness. You feel uh, out of breath when you walk for half a kilometer or one kilometer or climb one or two stairs of steps associated with a chest discomfort. It's a pre pressing or a squeezing type of pain in the center of the chest which radiates up to the neck and to the jaw. Also it can radiate to the upper abdomen, to the back, along both the shoulders, along the inner aspects of the arm and to the little finger. So this is a very characteristic type of pain called as angina and this is associated with sweating and uh, extreme weakness, breathlessness and along with it, if it is very severe, there can be a sensation of having nausea, vomitings or going to the toilet. So this kind of pain or discomfort should never be ignored and a person should immediately seek medical attention. Along with these, the other symptoms commonly thought of as acidity where they have only abdominal uh, pain or belching could also be a cardiac origin. Now, when a person has a doubt that he might be having cardiac symptoms, he should immediately approach his family doctor or a general physician or a cardiologist. And whenever a person has chest pain, he should try to get one ECG as immediately as possible. The idea is that the first hour of chest pain is called the golden hour where an ECG can help in diagnosing a person with a heart attack and this person can be treated immediately with uh, either thrombolytic therapy or primary angioplasty and that helps in preventing damage to the heart. So the first thing is recognition of the symptoms. So a good history taking will help us to identify the cause of the chest pain and an ECG will help in diagnosing a person having a heart attack or unstable angina. And we also have blood tests like uh, troponin or uh, CPKMB which uh, are the blood tests to diagnose damage to the heart muscle. So when a person, the other third modality of diagnosing heart disease is to do a echocardiography where some abnormalities in the 
overall cardiac pumping function can be seen. Now, basing upon the ECG, the blood tests or the echocardiogram, the clinician or the cardiologist can immediately diagnose a person having a heart attack and usual modalities of treatment because the time is the most important factor. In fact, time is muscle. So, one should not delay the treatment any longer and uh, the basic two modalities of treatment of a heart attack are either to give a thrombolytic therapy or to uh, take up the patient to the cath lab and do a primary angioplasty. Before taking up the patient for either of these procedures, the initial drugs which are to be taken are aspirin and uh, another molecule called as clopidogrel or ticagrelor or, or prasugrel. Along with it, uh, the drugs called as statins, rosuvastatin or atorvastatin and a sublingual nitrate commonly known as sorbitrate. These modalities help in relieving the pain of the patient and also to prevent further clotting of blood. So the best modality to open up a blocked vessel which causes the heart attack is to take the patient to the cath lab and do an angiogram. That will help us in identifying which vessels are blocked and what is the severity of the blockage. Depending on the target vessel or the infarct related artery, we can open up immediately by passing a wire, opening up the blockage with a balloon and putting a uh, stent. Stent is a metal spring like device which acts as a scaffolding to keep the artery open. So, the advantages of primary angioplasty is that it has a 95 to 96 percent success rate and it helps in re-establishing the blood flow to the heart muscle immediately. The ideal door to balloon time is around 90 minutes. So if you can take up the patient immediately to the cath lab within one to one and a half hours, it is the ideal scenario which helps in preserving the heart function and preventing permanent damage to the heart muscle. In case a person uh, cannot reach a center which has cath lab or a facility for doing a primary angioplasty like in the peripheries or in the districts or a smaller nursing home. We can opt for thrombolytic therapy. There are various good molecules available today like tenecteplase, retiplase, etc., which is an injection given intravenously as a bolus or as an infusion and this medicine helps in dissolving the clots within the coronary artery. It takes about 30 minutes to one to one and a half hours depending upon the molecule and depending upon the severity of the blockage in opening up the artery. So this particular modality of thrombolytic therapy has a success rate around 75 to 80 percent. And it is also a very useful modality especially in the districts or at far away places where it is difficult to have a cath lab center. Once the patient is either thrombolyzed or a primary angioplasty is done, he is kept in the ICCU for about a day or two till he is stable, his blood pressure and other parameters become stable. And apart from the usual therapies, it is also important to keep his blood sugars, his blood pressure also at a control value as normal as possible. The patient is usually started on the other molecules like beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, statins and uh, anti-anginal medications and uh, sometimes diuretics if the heart function is weak. So once the patient is stabilized then he is shifted to the ward or to the room and subsequent cardiac rehabilitation is done to make the patient come back to his normal routine self. This cardiac rehabilitation includes advice regarding the usage of medications, advice regarding the diet, the uh, things he should take and the food he should avoid. Commonly uh, high fat content foods or high carbohydrate content foods are to be avoided. and uh, 
the third important aspect is the chest physiotherapy the breathing exercises and also the physical activities uh, which in a graded manner the patient can slowly get back to his normal life so this is in short about the coronary syndromes and the way this can be tackled and treated effectively and help the patient in getting back to his normal routine life thank you